I'm John Huco, the, the General Secretary of Rotary International. And July 1st marks the beginning of a new Rotary year, when we usher in new leadership teams at the club, district, zone, and international level. And it's always a, a special time for us. But this year, uh, we're celebrating an especially important milestone in our organization as we pass the torch to the first ever woman to be president of Rotary International. But before we mark this, uh, this really historic uh, occasion with uh, incoming President Jennifer Jones, I think it's important that we look back on an extraordinary year in Rotary with our outgoing president, Shaker Mehta. Uh, it was a year capped with our first uh, in-person convention in three years, and it included numerous other markers of progress from, from significant membership growth to the many ways our service has benefited communities across the globe. Uh, it's also been a year when the number of new polio cases reached its lowest level in history, when our first uh, program with scale began to give real hope to everyone combating malaria in Zambia, and Rotary members across the globe donated $15 million to relief efforts in Ukraine and formed direct partnerships with Rotary clubs in that war-torn country. Uh, and this has led to projects that are making a huge impact in Ukraine as they continue to fight for their survival. So through it all, Shaker, you've uh, helped inspire Rotary members to, to think big and to, to dream big. Uh, you called on Rotary to grow more and do more, and uh, we're doing uh, exactly that. Uh, you began the Empowering Girls initiative that's inspiring new projects around the world to improve opportunities for, for young women. And that will be built upon for at least, for at least the next two years. In your travels around the globe, you and Rashi have met with roughly 30, that's 30 global leaders who pledged to work with us on, on vital projects. Uh, and the impact, of course, of those projects are going to be felt for, for many, many years to come. So Shaker, I wanna thank you for your leadership and the lasting uh, impression you've left on our, on our organization. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you so much for those kind words. And thank you for all the support and help that you've provided. You provide excellent leadership to the organization, which is so very important for us volunteers to be able to work. I would like to say a big thank you to the staff. We have some outstanding staff who uh, are at the back end, ensuring that uh, the organization works and moves so smoothly. Thank you so much for that. I would also like to thank each and everyone who came to Houston. Uh, to make it a big success. Uh, it was great to meet each other uh, face to face. Um, and all of this, despite the pandemic, despite all the challenges of the pandemic and the other challenges that we faced. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, thank you, Shaker, for those for those kind words. And of course, the Secretariat, we're always here to support you, Rotary Senior Leadership, and of course, our, our, our 1.2 million uh, Rotarians. Uh, I mean, as I mentioned in, in some of, uh, I mentioned some of the really important progress that's happened in Rotary this year. Uh, what, what stands out for you in, in all that you've sort of seen and, and experienced uh, over, these, uh, over these past uh, 12 months? So, you know, John, when I look back, I'm a very happy man. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I said, grow more and do more. Uh, grow more was the internal goal. Do more was the external goal. Uh, grow more, grow more. Oh wow! <laughs> the Rotarians around the world have uh, really lived up to the challenge, and we have grown like not in many, many years. Uh, our growth is uh, positive and a good positive, and I'm so happy about that. Uh, there has been diversity. The membership of women in our organization is increasing, which is great. Young people are joining Rotary outstanding progress in membership. Uh, and naturally, when we grow more, we are able to do more. Uh, polio, fortunately, this was the year when we were closest uh, to eradicating polio in the sense that the lowest number of polio cases were there during the year. And we now have a clear cut strategy uh, to ensure to see the end game as far as uh, polio is concerned. I'm so happy that uh, the program of empowering girls resonated so very well across the world. Wherever we went, we could see people are totally immersed into the programs which are empowering girls in different ways. And uh, our newest area of focus, environment, 
uh, well, I was invited to the COP26 and fortunately we uh, decided that we'll work on mangroves and we decided we'll work in seven different countries. Uh, and let me tell you, in just six months time, we already have progress in five of those countries and the others will soon take place. So when I look back, I'm a happy man and whatever we wanted to set out, uh, we've been able to achieve that. And of course, uh, it's because of the Rotarians around the world that we've been able to do this. Well, your theme, your theme this year was to uh, serve to change lives. Um, do, you, do you think that this, this theme resonated with Rotary members and inspired them to, uh, to action? As I said, uh, because we grew more, we also do more, we did more. The programs on environment, on the different areas of focus uh, during COVID even uh, are, uh, helped to the uh, displaced people from Ukraine. I think all of this put together, the Rotarians have done a great job, amazing job around the world. Uh, I call the district governors change maker governors and they've really changed the lives of millions of millions of people around the world. And we also call our Rotarians people of action. But I would even go ahead to say they are not just people of action, they are people of peace, as we have shown uh, proactively. We are people of uh, change. We have changed lives. Um, and finally, I think I, I take Rotary very philosophically. To me, uh, when we change lives, we are really doing God's work on earth. Rotarians truly, I believe, do God's work on earth when they bring water to places where there's no water, education to people, etc. Uh, saving lives of people, helping in disaster. All of these are great things that Rotarians do. And I must thank each and every Rotarian for doing what they do. Well, and thank you, Shaker, for your, for, for your leadership. It really was an, an outstanding year. Uh, so much got done. Uh, a lot of great initiatives um, continued and were started. And of course, we ended with a with a great great convention in uh, in Houston, our first again in person uh, convention in 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 three years. So thank you again for your leadership and and for everything you've done for Rotary, not only this year but 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 through the years. It's very very much appreciated. Um, and we're now also joined today by the the new 2022-2023 uh, Rotary International President uh, Jennifer Jones. Uh, Jennifer, uh, congratulations on becoming our new uh, Rotary president. Uh, you know, so much has been written and said already about being the first uh, woman to become president of our uh, organization. Uh, perhaps you could share with our fellow Rotarians, what, what, what does this mean for you personally and, and for the sort of the direction you'd like to see uh, Rotary take uh, in, in next year and in the years thereafter? Well, thank you, John, and hello to our entire Rotary family. And before I dig into that question, let me just say that I'm coming to you from uh, Ottawa, the capital of my home country. And July 1st, while it is our changeover day, it is also the birthday of um, my home country. And so I uh, thought it was very appropriate to be here in uh, uh, Canada and our Canada tour um, uh, group that we're all traveling together with and visiting clubs and raising awareness for our great organization. Let me also take a chance to say thank you to Shaker uh, and to Rashi for the incredible service that they have provided uh, over the past year through challenging times. And they have uh, certainly elevated the eye line, as you just discussed, with leaders across the globe and leaders within our organization too. I am incredibly excited to be um, representing something a little bit different coming in as our first female president. And that means that inclusion is something that we want to be able to acknowledge in ways perhaps that we haven't done in its fulsome uh, nature in, uh, in our past. And it's important that we acknowledge the amazing women in Rotary who did more than just open the doors that um, 30 years ago, but took up the challenge of becoming first. And we have a generation of women that have taken up positions of club president and district governor and, and on our board. And so we've been in our organization long enough now that um, it was inevitable we would see someone sitting in the seat of presidency. And, and I'm, I'm incredibly humbled and excited uh, right now. I think the world is watching us uh, to see what we do in this moment of inclusion. And that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why I'm calling on, on us to imagine Rotary because we have this unique opportunity right now to take advantage of this spotlight, to reach a wider audience perhaps than ever before, 
and to use this to springboard um, to even greater acts of service that capture our imagination. And this being first is uh, not a singular moment in Rotary, but it, it doesn't mean anything, quite honestly, until we see a second and a third. And that should apply across the Rotary world to anyone who wants to show up and see themselves as their authentic selves represented in our organization. No, and I, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Inclusion is, is, is obviously an incredibly important and concept. And, you know, as we've had, of course, a, a solid year of, of membership growth in, in Rotary. Um, but as you know, you know, gaining new members is only the beginning. We also need to keep those members engaged so they, they keep coming back and stay and stay with our, our organization. Again, you, you talked about the concept of inclusion. Any other thoughts on, on, on the issue of membership, membership growth, membership retention, uh, particular initiatives that you are going to be focusing on uh, this coming Rotary year? Sure. Thanks, John. First, let's salute uh, President Shaker for creating an excitement about bringing members into our organization. And I think that quite honestly, people found their way to us um, because of the pandemic in many ways, where we know that we have been able to reach out to people who felt the need to want to be connected. And we were able to create a channel, albeit virtually for two years, where people felt that they could be engaged with us. And it's translated, I believe, into membership. Now, what we need to do, and this is the important part, is that we need to keep them. We all know too well that we have been a revolving door for far too many years, and we need to stop that. And that really comes down to the comfort and care of our members. Surveys year after year tell us that the, the comfort and care of our members is the single greatest driver for member satisfaction and retention. We need to, I believe, not ask people when they're leaving, doing exit surveys, why they've left. We need to ask them when they're coming in what do they want out of this experience? And then we need to deliver on that value. You know, we have so much to offer. Personal growth, leadership development, lifelong friendships. These create the purpose and passion. And we need to ask our, our members, what do they want to do? And then give them meaningful responsibilities. When they have that, um, it's really hard to walk away because we make friends and we get our hands into service. And once that magic happens, um, I don't believe we need to ask people. I think people will come flooding in because they want to be with like-minded people. If, we're, if we serve our members, we serve our communities. And if we provide comfort and care to our members, they will truly, I believe, come to understand the incredible power of our organization. Well, that's why I think your, your theme of Imagine Rotary is, is spot on, because as we work to not only attract new members, but to retain them, uh, we're going to need to be flexible. We're going to need to, we're going to, need to be innovative and, uh, and we need to imagine, imagine things that are different that, that allow us to, as you, as you just pointed out, not only to attract our new members, but to, but to, but to retain them. And of course, one of the focal points of, of your presidency is, uh, and we're all looking forward to it, the Imagine Impact Tour that you'll be conducting around the world. Perhaps you could just share with us a little bit about the, uh, about the tour and, and, and what you hope to accomplish. Well, sure, John. And let me just say too, that the incredible flexibility that we offer right now and being able to do things a little bit differently is so important, but we also have to remember what's sacred. What doesn't change? What are our, our sacred truths, our, our core values, our four-way tests, the objects of Rotary? We can do things a little bit different, shaking up our meetings, making a little bit of noise, but we all adhere to those things. And we, we need to make sure that all of our members, um, regardless of whether you're a longstanding member or someone who, who is new to our organization, that we hold ourselves to a high level of integrity. And it's important that we never lose sight of that. One of the things, um, the Imagine Impact Tour that you just mentioned, uh, we're on the first leg of it. We're, um, we're kicking it off with a tour across my home country, going from north, the very farthest north, to the very farthest south, and from east to west. Ottawa, as I said, is our nation's capital, so only appropriate to be here on July 1st. But then what we're going to do is embark upon the Imagine Impact Tour internationally. And that means focusing on our seven areas of focus, adding one additional trip to Pakistan to highlight polio. But the reason for this is that we're going to high impact, sustainable, um, scalable projects in different parts of the world 
that showcase our areas of focus and the incredible work that our Rotarians, that all of you are doing. And the reason for this is to raise the eye line of the world. We're taking top tier media, we're taking influencers, we're taking social media, uh, people who are expert in this kind of area to help show the external world outside of Rotary what it is that we do. And there's so many people that don't have any idea of the breadth and scope of the incredible hard work and amazing things that we do across the globe. And I hope that while those stories play out to an international audience, we might have people look toward us, maybe for partnerships, maybe for membership. Maybe they just want to join along to do some service with us. Um, but I also want for our internal audience, our members, both you know, all of the members of our Rotary family, whether it's Rotaract, Interact, Rotary members, uh, Rotarians, I want them to also feel point of pride as these stories are being told and shared that they belong to something that is um, larger perhaps than ourselves. And it gives us the ability to do things unlike any other organization in the world. And hopefully, while we're doing this on the international level, this is gonna trickle down into districts and zones and clubs, most importantly, where they find their own way to do their own Imagine Impact Tour, to connect with, with media and tell our stories. It's critically important that we share these so that others want to join with us. Yeah. Now, you're so right. I mean, we have so much to be proud of as an organization. Our impact, the, the reach of Rotary is incredible. And so I salute you for this innovative concept. And I think all of us look forward to uh, uh, seeing you share uh, both locally, globally, regionally, uh, some of these incredibly high impact projects that are that are being carried out throughout throughout the world. So again, thanks for sharing your vision for uh, this upcoming new Rotary year. I think there's uh, fair to say there's tremendous uh, excitement building across the Rotary world. And again, we're looking forward to experiencing it uh, with you. So, so Shaker, as the 2021-2022 as the Rotary year uh, ends, uh, are there any, any pieces of advice you'd like to share with uh, with Jennifer from, from your year as, as our president? First of all, let me wish them all the very best. Uh, we've known Rashi and I have known uh, Jennifer and Nick for quite some time, and she's an outstanding leader, absolutely. Uh, Rotary is going to shine under her leadership, and we all look forward to it. We can imagine Rotary to be outstanding under her leadership, absolutely. Uh, you don't need to give advice to Jennifer. She she uh, is a smart lady and she'll do well. The advice that I can give to the Rotarians around the world is let's keep on that mantra, grow more and do more. Because if we grow more, which is so very important for our organization, we'll be able to do more, which is so very important for this entire world. Yeah. So as we keep uh, on serve to change lives, we also need to imagine how we are going to do that in different ways in different parts of the world. All the very best, Jennifer. Have a great year. Thank you. No, and Shaker, you're you're absolutely you're absolutely correct. Think of everything we're doing with our, you know, 1.2, uh, 1.4 really Rotary members. If you include Rotaract, uh, can you imagine what we could do if we had 1.5, 2 million, 3 million? And it's certainly certainly possible. So thank you again, Shaker, for for all that you did. Uh, in terms of helping us reach that goal. Uh, Jennifer, any any closing thoughts uh, from your end as we move into this new Rotary year? Well, you know, actually, Shaker, Serve to Change Lives is a theme that will live on because it's what we do. That's exactly what we do. We change lives every day. And while our themes change, the continuity of spirit um, remains. And so as I'm asking our Rotarians to imagine Rotary, it's asking them to dream. And it's asking them to dream about how they can serve to change lives because that's, like I say, what we do. So I am so grateful for being able to follow you to begin this year and um, the excitement. Yes, I do feel an excitement that is uh, growing. Uh, and, I, and I look forward to being able to meet Rotarians and see firsthand the incredible work that they're doing. Um, we, have, we have an organization that stands very tall and very proud in the world. And um, I'm humbled to be able to uh, take this office at this point in time in our history, a time when our world needs a little bit of healing. And I hope to be able to inspire our Rotarians and our Rotary uh, Rotaractors and our Rotary family 
to be able to join me as we uh, as we look towards doing some some good work and some good healing. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Shaker. Uh, thanks, Jennifer, and also thanks to all of you uh, for uh, for joining us today for this special virtual changeover ceremony. Uh, good luck to all the Rotarians, Rotaractors uh, around the world over the next Rotary year as we as we continue to serve to change lives and imagine Rotary. All the best and uh, and goodbye.